Welcome back to the tutorial. I'm recording this one day after we made the taxi. So two things happen. The first is that maybe some inconsistencies in what I was saying before and how I continue this video. Um, secondly, the weather is going to be different. So different weather at departure and different way, uh, weather during the route. But the weather at departure is actually not very different for, for, from what we had uh, yesterday, the only main change is the Q&H, but the wrong way in use and the wind is approximately the same. So we need to, to set our Q&H to 1009er. Uh, 1009er. One there it goes. And also we see that there are some things we have to handle, for example the INS. If you remember, INS, uh, when moving the aircraft, when moving Concord, um, then this one in appear and it's only related to the position so if we use the mouse wheel or right click to set the status there's one error one one zero six here we click on test there's another error one five six click on test and now errors are clear and we can continue uh, this the autopilot here is also switched on so we released it and we can continue with our before takeoff checklist First, the first item is just one cabin crew, which is not essential, it's just for fun. Shift number three. Hello, cabin crew, prepare for takeoff. Second item is uh, landing lights, which are actually different from other aircrafts because for landing, sorry, for taking off, we are just going to use the taxi turn lights, which are located here. Um, <coughs> sorry. Uh, if we have a look at the light panel, shift number four, uh, one thing is that I forgot to turn on uh, taxi lights uh, during the taxi procedure for some reason. When we activate them, they are here on the side, but uh, this side, these lights are incorporated, so I guess why uh, during the takeoff we keep these lights, but not the landing lights. The landing lights, they need to extend first and then we have to switch them on. Uh, in the in the um, procedures, in the checklist, it says if conditional landing lights are required. Uh, I can only think of this that, of course, at night they are required, but maybe not in other situations. I'm going to leave them on for the moment. Now, transponder, we activated uh, shift number seven, I believe. And now we turn this knob to the last position, which is the the traffic above and radio. I can't remember what's the RA4. Anyway, to the very last point. And uh, next, we confirm that the wheel lights are off so that there is no problem with the wheels. Light is off, that's correct. Then we recall the master warnings to check there's nothing we should worry about at this moment, nothing. And then we click on the button above, which is the inhibit mo button. So two amber lights goes on, go on. Now the takeoff monitor is a really important switch. Uh, as the name suggests, we left click, it's going to monitor the, the engine values of all four engines so that we make sure that we have enough power for taking off. When these mm, minimum values uh, when we get those minimum values, then the green light is going to switch on, meaning that we are good to go. And we listen, can't remember if it's the flight engineer uh, who says it, uh, power set. Or if one of these lights is not on, then we hear engine failure. Uh, by the way, this switch here went to the wrong position. Uh, it should be, if, as if you remember, in the four settings. Uh, actually, this uh, here is just a placard, so actually there's mm, no... Concord is not aware if we change this or not. Is the, if this is just a visual reference for the flight engineer. Um, <coughs> sorry, so the takeoff monitor is armed. Next, we set the reheats. Uh, we re set the reheats with these piano-like keys over here, shift number seven, six, sorry, si shift number six. Uh, they are also here, but because they are difficult to access, it's better if we use the shortcut Shift F4. And they get on, Shift F4, F4, and off. We know if the reheat are on or not. 
apart from that because of some yellow lights we can see over here so shift f4 and we see that the yellow lights are on shift f4 yellow lights are off we set them on uh, another setting is the pitch index we should uh, check that we've got the pitch index correct 13.5 uh, in the tutorial yesterday, in the in the settings yesterday, uh, here it was 13.6, so that's correct. And uh, brake fans should be off. They were off. No, they were on during taxi. Okay. I, anyway, they are off now, and they should be off. Uh, be, uh, we set on the brake fans during taxi because the carbon fiber brakes gets really really hot when used. So um, we should be very careful when taxiing and try to use the, the brakes as little as possible uh, in order to not to overheat them. Uh, here we can check what is the brake temperature right now and if any red light goes on then that's certainly a, a no-go. So brake fans and we also have to check that the brakes overload is not on. And that fini we finish uh, the checklist now. Now, before we have advanced full throttles, two things. Well, I forgot in yesterday videos, I, I showed you what was the, the... I'm going to pause now, in order not to burn fuel uh, if we are not using it. Um, I showed you that um, what was my configuration and um, what add-ons I was using, but I didn't show you what were the prepared settings. And the settings are just default settings. If I s uh, load here default settings, the only two changes I'm going to make make is on limited frames, and then set the textures to uh, 2048. The rest of settings, at least for my system, are in the default settings. So the performance that you see is just default. Uh, maybe there's change something okay anyway that's that's the what you saw is the settings that I'm using well the problem was with the lightning because the default settings uh, activated the HDR but I didn't have this activated I don't like it so I always disabled and the difference between the lighting was um, what caused the my screen to go blank to all black now before we take off please take into account that we activated the N1 88% limited uh, limiter for engine number 4 and that means that the left side of Concorde is going to push stronger it's going to have a higher power than the right side because we are pushing on the left uh, harder Concorde during takeoff has a tendency of going to the right that is normal and expected and we should be prepared in order to counteract that tendency also, and, and as I said in the, in the forum recently, uh, well, a user uh, commented that according to the British Airways procedure during before takeoff, the idle switch was set too high uh, in order to have a, a, a higher idle rate and improve the acceleration rate. So now what we're going to do, uh, sorry, I have to reset this before I made a, a test before. Okay. so. And make sure it's prepared right <coughs> sorry now what we are going to do is to on the count of three we start the elapsed time uh, after ever since we we take off and then we start the countdown for the uh, I'm quite clumsy today sorry Oof, sorry I don't know why okay once again, on the count of three, we start the counter. I'm going to release parking brakes on the count of three. And now we activate the countdown for the reheat. Now, three, two, one, now. Full throttle and reheat counter on. Uh, have a look at the airspeed. Uh, it will start counting at 60, 60 knots. Now have a look at the green lights. Four should get on. So now at 100, uh, power set. 100 knots. Power set. And now we continue for V1 and rotation speeds. And then after rotation, we have to try to keep the the pitch angle, V1. the selected pitch angle of 13.5 degrees.
rotate. V2. Okay. Okay. Decide. Now, right, sometimes climb. this makes this. Uh, okay, so uh, we are now can now uh, retract the landing gear because of the positive climb rate and try Three, to get two, to the 340 one, knots noise. because now we reduce the power uh, we are going to lose a lot of power we are going to try to keep that speed we activate now the autopilot and keep the airspeed I'm going to pause and just explain what I've done now in theory um, we shouldn't have and that is not the best of the takeoffs uh, as you have uh, you have seen now we shouldn't be engaging the autopilot right now but what happens is that now we have to go through several checklists we have to do several things we've got to go to the PDF uh, apart the site from the control so it's almost impossible just one person on one screen be able to get everything set so we need a literal extra help from the autopilot now when we engage the autopilot the two default modes are heading hold so that we are keep our current heading in this case the runway heading and also we are going to keep our pitch hold so we are going to uh, maintain the same attitude uh, the same angle of attack the same aircraft position uh, sorry the same aircraft position uh, that we had just before we hit the autopilot but now our main interest is to keep as close as 250 knots as possible so that we uh, achieve that by selecting the um, indicated speed hold the IS hold and then after that we have to click on the INS in order to tell Concord that we're going to follow the INS the, the program INS uh, for that, please make sure that um, this switch is into the INS position. So right now I'm going to release the pause and I'm going to click on the INS. Now in order to keep the 250 knots, uh, Concord is going to modify automatically the pitch and it's going to rise and go down depending on the power and other, other external factors as a wind or, or any other temperature or whatever in order to keep that speed okay so I'm going to pause again and let's go to the to the tutorial to the PDF and let's go to the after takeoff checklist and uh, this chart over here is important but right now we are not going to have a look at it we are going to go directly to the after takeoff checklist the first thing is the landing gear we've got to make sure that the uh, landing gear is up that the lights are off and then move the, the lever to the neutral position. As in many other aircrafts, uh, when the landing gear lever is in the up position, then the hydraulic system is activated, is on. And that means that we are using uh, hydraulic power to keep the landing gear up, but once uh, it's up and retracted, retracted uh, there's no sense in having the hyd hydraulic power and system um, keeping the, the the gear up when it's there already and it's locked and secure so what we do is uh, i'm going to release pause left click and push down and keep it in the neutral position next item is we are going to recall the master warning to make sure there's no alarm that we should be be aware of and there's no warning light. By the way, before I hadn't activated the in inhibited, as I said, I reloaded after um, after the problem with the screen, and then just well, went very quickly and forgot about the inhibition, but it should be there. Now, landing lights, we uh, keep the taxi turn, but we um, retract the main landing lights and went them off. Then the, uh, start the ADS heaters, which were in the TT inhibited position, we switch them on. Uh, shift number three, double um, right click and right click twice, and they are on. Now the pressurization, uh, as long as we are going to check that everything is correctly, as long as we have the virtual flight engineer active, 
the cabin pressurization, um, the virtual flight engineer takes care of that. The only thing we have to do right now is just check that the uh, cabin altitude is changing so that the cabin is pressurized and everything goes according to plan. Ha the same happens with the secondary air doors, which are control uh, shift number two. They are controlled by the, um, by the virtual flight engineer, so even if we want to make any change, uh, the system won't let us because the uh, virtual flight engineer is in charge. Uh, next, the nose and visor, where we put them in the up and locked position, but first uh, double check that the landing gear is in the neutral position. Landing gear is in neutral, so uh, we can put now the nose up and then once the nose is up, we raise the visor. This should make our cabin, uh, our cockpit much quieter because this um, isolates the, the cockpit uh, in a very high degree. Now, we are still rising and we are reaching an important point. I talked before about, about this chart. Now, the noise abatement procedures established that at 3,000 feet, the power setting should be 93% uh, of N2. Now, we see that this is not possible and our power setting is 95, according also to our uh, departure chart. And, <coughs> sorry, uh, the problem is we need this kind of power. We cannot go lower 95% uh, because we will not be able to climb and we don't want that. Uh, so we, ha we have to wait until 4,000 feet and then the power setting is 95%, but we already are at 95%. So we've got to wait until 5,000 feet in this particular case in order to increase the N2 power setting to 97%. So once we get to this um, 4,000 feet, we are going to change. If you remember, we set 6,000 feet at the initial altitude as per the um, Copton departure, but this time we will not be restricted by the standard departures and we'll just increase the, our destination altitude to flight level 260. I will talk about why this specific altitude later. 4,000 feet, now we can increase, no, 4,000 feet means 95%, we are still at 95%. There's a very simple rule which can help us remember when and, and what power setting apply. We just start at 93% at 3,000 feet. So it's the same figure, three. Three from number three, 3,000, and three from 93. And from that moment, we increase power settings in 2% of N2 every 1,000 feet of climb. So we started in 93, 4,000, 95, 5097. Now please take into account that the virtual flight engineer reduced the throttle settings to at about 75% during takeoff. Uh, but your physical throttle in your joystick, in quadrant or whatever system you use is still at full power. So now in order to increase to 97%, we actually have to decrease the power settings in our physical controls and it needs some practice to just get the, um, the right figures. Of course, as, as we go and increase the power settings, the rate of climb is also going to increase and we are going to increase faster. Usually above 5,000 feet, Concorde was usually cleared of the 250 knot speed restriction and <coughs> we could accelerate more. But uh, because our rate of climb is even very slow right now, um, I usually uh, keep it and comply with that, with that limitation of the 250 knots until 10,000 feet. Right, we reach now another acceleration point, 6,000 feet, so we go to 99%. Sometimes, as I said, it's just difficult to set the exact amount of, of accelerating power. I'm going to make sure we finish with the checklist. Yep, and okay, I'll explain this part later and we go to the next part. Uh, we can apply it at max 0.7, but actually I usually do most of this checklist at uh, 10,000 feet. We are 7,000 feet, which is our last limitation, which is to 101 and to 101% and There we are. 
and just in a very few time uh, we are keeping our speed <coughs> sorry once again and in a moment we are going to apply full climb power okay we are there full climb power okay so now let's start doing this uh, Mac 0 0.7 um, which we are going to do a little bit earlier but uh, I really think this is the right moment to do it first altimeters uh, of course that depends on the transition level of each uh, airport um, we are above the transition level now in the United Kingdom but of course if we were departing from an American airport uh, in the United States we, we would have to wait until 8,000 8, feet 18,000 feet sorry so now we said uh, 2292 and 1013 1013 the next item in the checklist is the brake fans make sure they are off they should be but now we just check and next step the engine control schedule because we are now above the 8,000 feet uh, we no longer need that limitation so control shift number two and set the engine control schedule to normal now we are now above the 10,000 feet so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click shift 7 I'm going to check the vertical speed control and now we've got two controls one is this left uh, the white indicator this is the our desired um, vertical speed I'm acting here on this uh, knob or this switch uh, if we left click we put the nose down uh, so our rate of climb is going to decrease and our speed are going to increase and there are two ways to control the, the sorry <coughs> the attitude of Concorde one is with the vertical speed and we should be actually using the pitch sorry the the pitch hold yes we should be keeping the pitch hold and changing the vertical speed with the pitch and not with the vertical speed itself but it's much more difficult to control the exact rate of climb with the pitch than with the vertical speed so even if it is not the, rec the recommended or the standard procedure I find this more convenient we are accelerating still uh, seat belt signs and now that the Concord is more level off, it's more horizontal uh, no problem at all deactivating the seat the seat belt signs now the taxi turn light we can set them off and we are over 10,000 feet so of course they should be off more things to do the nozzle of the right lights I've never ever seen them see, seen this on but anyway uh, shift number two and then we go to this box over here and this nozzle of the right lights should be off continue the secondary nozzles should be modulating control shift number two and the secondary nozzles are these packets at the at the back of the engines are these packets if we see them we, they are not uh, fully open and that that is exactly the secondary nozzle angle and we should check that they are closing little by little and uh, they should be at around if I remember correctly between six or seven just before transonic acceleration and then after supersonic uh, they should be at zero fully open now we continue I think the checklist is complete now yeah the claiming complete uh, checklist is oops sorry is complete now uh, we are reaching to 390 knots which is our reference speed and what I do is shift number seven or si sorry shift number six and then we are going to increase our vertical speed so that we slow down our indicated speed and that way the autopilot uh, is going to be easier for the autopilot to engage the desired speed because the, um, it's not going to be a, um, a big gap between our current indicated speed and our desired speed so we are very close now and 90 we click on indicated speed hold <coughs> we expect to climb now at that speed if we see it's very very close to the operating op the maximum operating speed indicated by this barber pole now another thing we've selected to um, flight level 260 but 
Once we reach flight level 6260 with this configuration we've got right now, sorry, uh, Concord is not going to level off. To level off we need to click here in the altitude acquire button and now with this light on uh, Concord is going to level off at this altitude but we should be very careful because every time we change the, the um, climb mode uh, this light is going to go off. For example, we are now in a steady climb. I could click on pitch hold. Speed shouldn't change very much. But if you've seen, the altitude acquired light has gone off. Now, if I engage it again, uh, if I click the indicated speed hold, it's going to go off once again. So please remember that every time that you change the climbing mode, you need to click again on the altitude acquire in order to engage that speed. Now, um, there's another problem, well, not a problem, but just a, a situation we've got to be aware of, is that now Concord uh, actually is going to level off a flight level 260 as desired, but there's another problem. Now we are not flying any auto throttle mode and we are at full power, 100%, and and full power so once we level off it's going to over speed we need to tell Concord that um, well when the altitude acquire button is selected if we hit on the auto throttles they are not going to engage immediately you will see that one of the the pitch hole I remember uh, blinks for a moment but uh, in any of these three buttons here these are the indicators that the auto throttle is engaged. As you can see, none of them is. And that is because of the altitude acquire button. If this button was not selected, then engaging the auto throttle would keep our current, um, our current speed and also our current pitch. Uh, when flying subsonic, it's recommended to switch the two auto throttles. Uh, not as supersonic as we'll see, but during su subsonic flights, it is the recommended setting to set the two auto throttles. Um, there was something else I was just about to say. Uh, oh, yes. Why flight level 260? Uh, one of the critical aspects, one of the key aspects of Concorde was the balance, the center of gravity, which we, we can check always here. Our center of gravity should always be between these two marks. Now, the pitch angle, the angle of attack, uh, it's essential to both because Concord Delta Wind, at the same time, wind is hitting the, 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 um, the wings, and at the same time that is, pro is providing lift, we are just 1,000 feet, as you can see. We are at the same time um, having lift, but drag. So we try to fly as flat as possible to reduce drag as much as possible, but at the same time, we need some lift. And, and this is like, um, well, if you see now, the altitude of the quad is selected, we are reaching our flight level 260, we are leveling off, and now the um, IS hold is selected, is highlighted, meaning that the auto throttle is on. We have to be at this uh, flight level 260 until the acceleration, acceleration point. If you remember at first, I selected from point 0.0 to point 0.4 in order to know what our distance was uh, so now we are 48 miles this is exactly the same point now so it doesn't really matter very much uh, i will select now another waypoint which is point waypoint number seven and uh, why seven because at seven we need to change cards i'll talk about that later but i like to have that reference now we are 47 miles from our acceleration point we are still flying over land in the uk so uh, we cannot accelerate to supersonics yet, for the, and I believe we are at over Filton Airport. Yeah, this is Filton Airport. This is where Concorde was born, and this is where Concorde uh, landed for the very last time. So every time you do the, the route from the United Kingdom to New York, please have in mind you're f uh, flying just over home. So we have to keep this flight level 260 until the acceleration point. And as I was saying, the, um, the pitch angle, the, the angle of attack is going to change depending on, on our weight 
and uh, our flight level. When we are fully loaded at departure, uh, flight levels 260 and 270 are the recommended flight levels uh, before acceleration to supersonic. We have to wait for five minutes before we reach the acceleration point. So I'm going to make a pause here and not even not also a pause, but we are, I'm going to end this particular video and we'll continue the tutorial on another video for me in five minutes for you uh, in just a second. Okay, see you now.